would have thought. Uh, next, it's the North East Derby between Sunderland and Newcastle. It's eight years since the Black Cats last won one of these local encounters. The match commentator at the Stadium of Lights was Guy Mowbray. On the day that the clocks go back, welcome back to a simpler time. Forget the off-field politics and power struggles. This is all about the game, the pride, the passion, and most importantly, the result. And what a game for Sunderland keeper Martin Fulop. The Hungarian plays in the Premier League for only the second time after regular stopper Craig Gordon injured an ankle in training yesterday. At the other end of the experience scale, Dwight York comes in for his second game of the season, having played against Arsenal three weeks ago. And he's one of eight in the Sunderland side, experiencing this derby for the first time. For Newcastle, the same side that drew against Manchester City on Monday, with Habib Bai having won his appeal against the red card he received in that game. Captain Nicky Butt has been past fit, and that means that Joey Barton's much-publicised return is as a substitute. Jonas Gutierrez also back on the Magpies bench. Headed by Basson, but straight to Chimbonda. Now Brunk. Chimbonda. Juve wants it, gets it, Marbronk on the move into the box, the ball just evaded him, it beat Steven Taylor as well and he's lucky to get away with that one. Roy Keane is well aware of this fixture's history, over 28 years since Sunderland beat Newcastle at home, and Keane says it's about time someone did something about it. Whitehead, now Dwight York, Jim Bonder again getting forward down the right-hand side for Newcastle. Again, Chris Hewton's got something to say about that. Now Brunk. Good one-two between Chimbonda and Mal Brunk. Steve Mal Brunk into the penalty area. And Gibral Cissé gives Sunderland the lead. Celebration of match. Don't tell me the foreign players don't understand the importance of this game. That meant a lot. Mal Brack with the run. Nobody really put the pressure on him. And it's an instinctive finish from Gibral Cissé. On he goes, Steve Mal Brunk unchallenged. And Cissé unmarked. They'll all be trying that in Sunderland tonight. Here's Colaccini. Basson. Bronk and Chimbonda doubling up. The song still swung it over. McCartney's missed it. This is Jeremy deflected. Collins blocks. In comes Duff. Martin's effort is blocked by Whitehead. Martin's again. And look at the way Sunderland's players are sliding in. Defending with everything they've got. Newcastle's best attack of the match by a distance. Amiobi, too strong for Chimbonda. Now it's a Newcastle free kick. Just a hopeful cross from Sebastian Besson, but it led to pinball in the penalty area. Now this could be a very good opportunity for Newcastle. Colaccini and Taylor on the edge of the six-yard box. Amiobi two, curled in by Jeremy. One-one. Amiobi scores for Newcastle United. And it was simple. He peels away to the back post and nobody goes with him. Super cross from Jeremy, right onto Amiobi's head. Two goals in two games for Schola. Straight through the gloves of the helpless Fulham. Now the mood's changed. Joe Kinnear at the helm of another Newcastle United fight back so far. Martins, now Damien Duff with the chance. Well, Martin Fuller watched it carefully. Here's Richardson, caught in possession by Nicky Butt. It's two on two here. Martins leads the charge for Newcastle. Now Shola Amiobi with the chance. Chance gone. Well, Amiobi has scored once in this game. I think this was a more presentable opportunity. Checked inside, and then made a real mess of the finish. Joe Kinnear knows what a moment that was. 
could be so important. The atmosphere around the ground is getting just a little bit more tasty now. And the appearance of Joey Barton on the touchline hasn't helped. There are a few objects coming his way. Richardson. Speared up to Cissé. Colaccini got something on it. Given with a tremendous save. Cissé's furious with himself. Just poked out a toe. Didn't really get it. It's a scuff. And given it advanced at just the right time. Juve. Cartney makes the run on the overlap. Juve has been hustled out of it by Jeremy, but not for very long. On goes Juve again. Back to Elhad Juve, who's tripped. Now, where was it? I think it's just outside. It's a yellow card for Nicky Buck. And it's a free kick on the very, very edge of the penalty area. Clear trip. And a good decision by the referee. It was outside. That's where the wall should be. Reluctantly, they're getting there. Well, as last week at Fulham, Chimbonda's making a nuisance of himself in the opposition wall. Let's see what he does. It's Richardson! It's a rocket! Unstoppable! Sunderland have the edge again. With a searing shot from Kieran Richardson. Pasche given before he saw it. And this time, Chimbonda stayed still in the wall. That's as excited as Roy Keane gets. Now Malbronk. Jones to the right, Cissé further over. Cissé's looking for Kenwin Jones! Oh, that would have won it. Whitehead. Here's Cissé. Working it out to El Hasjouf. Well, it looked as though he was going to. Instead, he's going for goal again. What a shot! And only the post prevents Cissé from winning it for certain. Well, in fits and starts, he has been terrific today. This is the change that is getting the reaction. Nicky Butt off. He's been struggling with injuries, done well to play. Joey Barton on. Not every Newcastle fan is cheering that. Not one Sunderland fan is. Mike Riley's had a look at the watch. Collins. Another look at the watch. Barton. The celebrations are Sunderland's. The long, long wait is over. And they've beaten Newcastle United, their greatest rivals, at home for the first time since 1980. Gibral Cissé with a first half goal. Amiobi equalised, but then a fitting goal to win it was Richardson's Rasper. It'll be a famous goal on Wearside for many a long year. Sunderland 2, Newcastle United 1. It's been a long time for our supporters to wait, and uh, it's, it's an, you know I'm surprised how long it has been. But these things happen in football, and uh, it was nice to kind of put an end to that today. This is one game that I was aware of from day one when I got the job. I looked at the fixtures, and this is one game I really knew I, I you know I couldn't afford to lose. So I'll probably come under severe criticism, but it won't be the first time in my life, and I'll have to pick myself up and the players because now we've got a massive game on Tuesday night against West Brom. There's always a feeling in the North East that uh, people not from the area don't understand how much this game means, but I think a few of you have proved that wrong today. No, I definitely know. From the first day you sign, you know, the people in the club, you know, they're, they're Mackhams as well, and they let you know what it's about. You know, I'm a Seuss, they're Mackhams as well, you know, and uh, all in a club, everyone lets you know how big the game is. You know, the lads come, the foreign lads coming in, you know, it's all drummed into us early doors, how big the game is, so it was a great win today. Joey Barton back today, that obviously got headlines. Was that a difficult decision for you? Um, I only looked at Joey Barton's <coughs> ability to play football. You know, I wanted to do everything I possibly could to win this game today. And uh, Joey was fit and well, so he felt that, you know, just given the last 10 minutes, see what can happen. 
might have, we might be standing here talking about him scoring a goal. A little bit of over-exuberance in the celebrations at the end. Hopefully there won't be a big issue made out of that. But again, our supporters have waited a long time and, you know, you know, again, hopefully, you know, they, they, again, there won't be such a big deal made out of it. Um, you know, there won't be any uh, problems with the FA from that. Well, they might have problems with the police because the Northumbrian police have said they will launch a full inquiry into the crowd trouble at today's match. 29 arrests were made for a variety of offences and the police said in a statement uh, this evening that it is only through good fortune that nobody was seriously hurt. As for the game, um, good to see Kieran Richardson finally get a free kick mm. close. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, could go back to last week and obviously the, the free kick at Fulham, uh, the two free kicks at Fulham, in, in all honesty, Fantastically taken, as you never know, he hit the post three times. And he thinks I'm never going to score from it. And this was this was brilliant. Goalkeeper, no chance whatsoever. That was disallowed. Today's, as Guy says, Richardson's rasper, and it and it was a rasper, it's an absolutely sensational strike. It all sorts as soon as it's left its foot. And it it really gave Sunderland the win that they deserved. I thought, yeah. I thought they were much better today. And, and one of the reasons they were much better, I thought Gibril Cisse yeah. was you, out. You two were both sitting in that office. What? Both saying he never did that for Liverpool. No, he, he didn't. No. Well, I'll, <laughs> tell you, I'll tell you what he did he for Liverpool. He, he, did, he was good on his own playing up front. I think, I think some players, a bit like when Henri was at Arsenal, are, are better on their own. I think, I think he does it really well. The problem with Cisse is he needs a lot of chances to score for me. But the amazing thing after those really bad injuries, he's got an absolute, such a fantastic turn of speed yeah, which obviously quick. in that position helps him play and today you know it was it was he got himself in wide position set a great chance for Kenwin Jones who'd come on as substitute um, and we have him here where he's you know slowly jogging out and he keeps himself on side plays it through you know it's a, it's a decent strike at goal and he was a real threat to Newcastle in fact they didn't really cope with him at all all day gets a bit lucky here uh, decent strike but he's just one of those players sometimes that, you know, especially away from home, you can, you can just let him go. This is his goal. Um, nice little bit of movement as well. You'll appreciate this, Gary. Just, you know, sees where the defender is, just breaks away, just a couple of little strides, peels the back. All stick. it needs. It's good. Listen, I want to ask you a question. Yeah. What happens to your tattoos when it all goes south? I think that's the map he drew to escape from Liverpool. Oh, was that what it was? That's the only way we could get out of there. The um, road out there. You spotted something else as well with Mr. Mr. Taylor. Ah, well, yeah, th th this, is, this is funny. This is a little bit tongue-in-cheek, but... Um, ball just played down. Newcastle's right. Comes out and tries to deal with it. And it hits him on the arm. I mean, it's absolutely... It's just... It's a no-brainer. He said, no, it didn't hit me. It, it, it told me, it told, told me honestly, referee, absolutely no problem whatsoever. It was, but it's his arm. I mean, there you are. And that's his arm. But, of course, he has a little bit of history in this department. Oh, this is just fantastic. Brilliant. Uh, of course, that hit him right, <laughs> right in the stomach knot. Just, well, watch this. Watch him with the referee. He's magnificent. Oh. <laughs> so, he's been got. <laughs> The look of sort of, oh, no, it yeah. wasn't me. C certainly worth seeing again. <laughs> oh, uh, just, be 